Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to show you the second part from my trip to Dresden. In this part I want to show you basically the Zwinger, which is a palace or actually a part of the palace that was used for outside events and also there are a lot of famous collections in there, a lot of museums. Me personally, I would go to Dresden for that location alone, but when you're there, it is definitely worth a visit. The building dates back to the early 18th century and as I said, it was used mainly for outside events and festivals and such things. Some of that stuff goes back to the 15th century actually. There is a splendid porcelain museum, a great exhibition of old paintings and an exhibition of technical, physical instruments from the Enlightenment era. So first, when you turn right, just after the entrance, there is already the painting collection, Alte Meister, the old masters, and uh, that has a lot of Christian art, but also otherwise just wonderful old paintings. I like that collection very much. Some of these paintings I'm not allowed to show on YouTube though, because hundreds of years ago, Germans were already more liberal than YouTube is now.
But I have to say my favorite collection, my favorite museum is called Mathematisch Physikalischer Salon. And that is a exhibition of mathematical and physical instruments. The first part is dedicated to maps and globes and tools for measuring distances and cartography. Also these geometrical tools were of course used in the military when it came to aligning a cannon in the right way of course. So there was some practical applications to all this of course. Then there are the tools of the enlightenment, everything about measuring but also demonstration tools such as optical instruments such as concave mirrors and gigantic lenses that they could use to melt metals and even break stone. There is also a section on electrostatics, some early batteries are on display here. But you also find exotic and gigantic thermometers and hygrometers and all that fancy stuff. I also think that the section about timekeeping, about clocks, is very impressive. So you see that the king of Poland and the elector of Saxony was a very enlightened prince and he tried to stay informed and use the latest trends and developments in science and technology for his advantage and maybe, I hope so, also for the betterment and the advancement of his people. When I walked through this exhibition I couldn't help but think that leaders back then were much more enlightened and much more educated than our leaders are today for sure. It is also a testimony for the innovative power that the Holy Roman Empire already had back then. It must
the Porcelain Museum, the city of Meissen, is very close to Dresden and this is where in Saxony porcelain was invented. Of course, that was not the first time that porcelain was invented, but the Germans, or the people of Saxony I should say, they discovered the recipe for porcelain by themselves, independent of the Far East. We knew of course that they had it there and we imported it of course already, but until then Europeans could not manage to produce it themselves. It is actually a funny story, well not so funny if you were that alchemist called Johann Friedrich Böttger and he claimed at the beginning of the 18th century that he could turn um, simple materials into gold. That was of course um, not just the Philosopher's Stone, but also making gold out of lead, for example, or out of other less valuable materials, was one of the big goals of the alchemists. And when the Prince Elector, August the Strong, heard about that, he um, had him locked up uh, and until he can uh, finally succeed in making gold, uh, which he never did, of course, because that's not possible with uh, chemistry or alchemy, as you all know I guess. So, uh, but then um, this guy discovered something, some precursor to porcelain and eventually later in um, 1708 he discovered the European porcelain. So porcelain from the manufactory in Meissen is very famous for that reason and it is still being produced and there is a great exhibition there. But there is also Chinese porcelain as well as Japanese porcelain, Arita porcelain, for example, which is also very famous. So you can see wonderful pieces here. Also in the Zwinger there are chimes out of porcelain, so bells made from porcelain, and in Meissen the church also has bells made from porcelain.
So that was my little trip around the Zwinger. Now I go back out again, passing the Semperoper and halfway around the Catholic Cathedral, the Hofkirche. So I hope you enjoyed this little walk with me today. Next time I might show you the University of Dresden or the train station or maybe both. I will see how I will put that one together. Enjoy the rest of your day. Servus, Kameraden.